When you're using big drill bits, uh, your drill will whip around and I've already got hit in the face. What is going on? I'm Dylan with BreakingBolts.com and there has been tons of work done on the Jeep this week. We have knocked out a lot of big projects on it and uh, finally, we, we can see the light at the end of the tunnel on this thing. So in today's video, I'm gonna take you through absolutely everything we accomplished on the Jeep build this week, give you a great update on that. And then I'm gonna show you how to remount your spindle for a three quarter inch bolt for high joint steering. All right, so on the rear of the vehicle, absolutely everything is done on it. The only thing that needs to be done on the rear now is the drive shaft. That thing needs to get extended because we stretched the rear out about eight inches. Our drive shaft isn't fitting up anymore. But otherwise, we have leaf spring perches on, leaf springs mounted, new brake calipers and rotors mounted, shocks are mounted, and the brake lines are even finished. So the drive shaft needs to be done. We have to put a lube lock seal on the differential cover, fill it with fluids, and uh, she'll be ready to roll. Let me show you these shock towers here. These shock towers came out great. Got the Fox 2.0 shocks on the rear. The tires are mounted up on both sides. Got the Walker Evans wheels with the Procomp Extreme 40 inch tires. There it is, great stance on it. Looking amazing. Fueling is done, I think we need to get a pop valve on the vent and then we need to get a, a breather hose on the top of the differential. Here's another shot of the rear here. Look at that stance. I am extremely happy with the way the rear looks. Now to the front. Alright, so on the front we have lower control arm mounted and fully welded up. got all those welded we have the 23 inch shock tire welded up got the Fox 2.5 installed steering is mounted up this side's already reamed out for that three quarter inch bolt this isn't my permanent pan hard bar this is a temporary pan hard bar just for mock-up hopefully we can get one of those built today we put the shock tabs on the top of the knuckle there. Looks really, really cool. That shock tire comes all the way up. We had to cut the fender well out of it to fit it. You can see how nicely that's welded on there. There's a better shot. We will probably put some gussets on it. We are gonna put some gussets on each side of these shock tires here just for strength, but otherwise, this looks great. We gotta remount the spindle here for a three quarter inch bolt. We need to install the shock tower and the panhard bars get right in the way of where the shock tower needs to go. So we need to figure out a way to, to fit around that. We need to get the, the brakes back on this thing. All right, so the first thing we're doing is we're gonna drill out the spindle for a bigger bolt. Basically, we're going from this uh, small, dinky little 5 8 bolt, which was the original plan, all the way to a 3 quarter inch bolt. You can see these compared side by side. Much beefier. Now this three quarter inch bolt is paired with a seven eighths by seven eighths offset heim from Artex, Artec uh, Industries. And we have seven eighths safety washers here. You see that nice and stubby. And that fits in perfect. Now you wanna make sure if, if you go to like seven eighths by seven eighths, if you go 7 8 by 7 8 offset heims and you don't drill your spindles for a bigger bolt and then you're putting a 5 8 bolt into a 7 8 I mean a 3 quarter inch hole here, that's a lot of play. There's about uh, 10 thousandths of an inch of play on each side of this and uh, you'll, you'll be clanking down the road. It's very unsafe. 
you'll have a lot of stress on this bolt and eventually it will break. It'll hurt your heim. Now to accomplish drilling this hole, uh, I have a method. Uh, I don't really have a method. It's, it's more just winging it and trying to stay safe. So right here I have some cheaper drill bits from Tractor Supply. These were $11 a piece. This is a 5 8 drill bit, and then this is the 3 quarter inch drill bit. That was $11. Um, I had an 11 16 drill bit, and I was, I was planning on stepping it all the way up, going from 5 8 to 11 16 to 3 quarter finally. But I found the $11 drill bit pretty much bent instantly, so I wouldn't waste your money on the cheaper drill bits. This is a DeWalt 3 quarter inch drill bit here, and I drilled the entire passenger side spindle with this single drill bit here. Now I did use, I made use of some uh, drilling oil here, some tapping oil, uh, just so there wasn't too much heat. And then I even have some gear oil, uh, pretty much anything helps. I just use a standard drill like this, simple drill. It handled it, it didn't like it, but it handled it just fine. So I'm hoping the combination of all of these things can get this driver's side done today as well. Uh, the last thing we wanna do is to be driving back to the parts store to get more drill bits on a Sunday. That, that's what really adds a lot of time to your builds. I put some uh, oil around the hole we're drilling here and I have my drill in uh, the lowest position on uh, the drilling setting here. You wanna take this as slow as possible. The lowest, the lowest RPM you can get your drill, the better. And also the safer it's gonna be. We're gonna have a lot of problems drilling through this still, but uh, we're gonna limit the amount of problems we have by going slow, taking our time, making sure the, the hole stays straight. Just for comparison, you can see this 5 8 bolt goes right in. And this is the amount of material we need to take off. It doesn't fit in at all. Nice and slow. So you can even hear with how slow I'm going, we might be doing uh, 30 or 40 RPMs on this and we still have a lot of chatter. All that clacking and clicking you're hearing is the bit jumping off the metal and making a chatter. Uh, that means this bit is uh, one, not very sharp anymore. It's, it's still pretty sharp, but not sharp as it was. And two means the quality of the hole is lower the more sound you have. You don't really want any sort of sound when you're drilling anything at all. So we'll try to take this even slower and we're gonna try to we're gonna try to put some gear oil on here. See if some gear oil can help with this process. You don't want to be pushing down on this at all. You want to make it to where your wrist isn't in a position to where it could break because when this drill bit catches, it will take the drill with it. I was able to stabilize, put the battery against the frame here. I know you can't see it, but I put the battery against the frame and that's kind of stabilized this, this drill bit quite a bit. And now we're getting a lot less chatter, if you can hear. Hear this? A lot less chatter now that the drill bit stabilized. Now I'll say we got this done, but the hardest part about the entire drilling process is when you get to about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch before reaching all the way through it, the drill bit gets stuck every single time you try to get it in. You just need to find a place for the entire drill to hit so it doesn't hit you in the face. Put it on full blast, 
get the RPMs up real good and then just slowly inch it down until it catches and eventually after 50 times it'll catch and go all the way through but it's very tough when you get towards the bottom it just wants to catch on everything. Now this bolt can just slide right in. Not much play on each side of it. It's perfect. All right, there we go. Big old monster one and one eighths impact socket right here. Look at that up there. <laughs> 